fantastic. What a great band you've got. It's not bad, is it? <laughs> Thank you, Philippe. Good evening, everyone in Brixton and everyone in the United States and in Canada. Hope you enjoyed that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's great. Uh, do you think the DVD captures the magic of uh, the concerts in particular? I think so. I think it's fantastic. It's a real sort of sense of excitement about it, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I certainly tried it from back there. <laughs> right. Uh, now let's take some questions. Uh, how this is going to work is that we're going to start with the questions from uh, across the Atlantic. And then we're going to open it up to the floor in Brixton here. So, the first question is from Joe Ferrerio, I think it's pronounced like that, of Niagara, New York. I think we're going to see him on the screen, I think. David, with all the wonderful talent that joined you along your tour and playing at some very unique venues, which particular show was your favorite and why? So, which was your favorite show? why the question was from David. How there were so many great shows, you know, so many great places we played at. It's very hard to pick one out, you know. Um, we played in Venice, that was so spectacular, in Gdansk. Uh, we played New York City, we played um, at Radio City Music Hall, which is an old favorite, it's a fantastic place. Um, there's a great old steam curtain that we used um, at a, at a midnight show with Pink Floyd back in 73 or something that we managed to use again this time. And that was also the, the first show that we had uh, David Crosby and Graham Nash come along to. So that was a really special moment for, for me. They were great. We rehearsed in, the, um, in, a, in a room that there's a picture of somewhere, um, which is all tiled, and it was the, it was the elephant room. It was where, where they had these shows. They had an elephant coming on stage at Radio City Music Hall. <laughs> And um, this was called the elephant room, where they kept the elephant. God knows what it smelled like in those days. That's that picture that looks like it's in the loo. The yeah. Tour. It's right. With me and yeah. Nash, of course, <laughs> rehearsing. Great. Okay, well, the next question is from George Kipe of Baltimore. Jipe? Jipe, is it? Jipe? Jipe. I don't know. Jipe. <laughs> right, and we're going to see him on the BT now. Casa Lorzo was a big inspiration for On an Island. Have you been anywhere recently that may have inspired any new music? So, Casa Lorzo, do you pronounce that? Casa Lorzo, yes. I've always wanted to It's from the Italian, Castello Rosso. Of course. Red Castle. So, yes. How many years have we done? Well, at that, Okay, was a big inspiration for On an Island. Have you been anywhere recently that may have inspired any new music, he asks? Hmm, well, it's, it's, it's hard. It was, um, I must say that, that the moment that is described in that song, you know, uh, in the song On an Island, which was on that Castellorizo and uh, the opening piece with the guitar, um, we had a fantastic time there with some friends of ours in 93, in fact, and uh, those friends, two of them are now dead, unfortunately, um, and it was a really magical sort of time we had together that thinking back on was something really special, and sometimes you can be in a very special place and it can take a while to filter through to you exactly how special that place or that moment was. But I have to say, it's actually more about the people than it is about the place. Uh, although it is a fantastic place. Okay, well the next one is... Did I question. avoid that question sufficiently? Uh, <laughs> yes, I... understand. Um, uh, right, the next one is from Rudders, Mark Rudkin of Burlington, Ontario. Mm. Rudders. We've heard of him. Greetings from Ontario, Canada, David. This is Rudders from Burlington. My question is, excluding past and present bandmates, 
If you could invite one musician to a dinner party, who would it be, and briefly, why? Thank you. Right, who would you invite to uh, past or present? One musician. Excluding bandmates. <laughs> I couldn't do that. It'd be a bit sad, wouldn't it? Just one musician? Yeah, yeah, it'd be terribly sad. I mean, I don't think I could do it. I, I would definitely want to have these bandmates, some old bandmates too, maybe. We just, we did it last week, in fact, Phil, didn't we? We, we round the sat out campfire. round a campfire. <laughs> you cooked. <laughs> cooking we burnt meat on a, on a fire and, and talking and carousing a little bit into the wee hours. Uh, that'll do it for me. Sorry. Yeah, that's a good answer, yeah. That's all right. <laughs> um, right, next one is from Susan Neighbours, Carson City, Nevada. Hi, David. I would like to know, what type of music do you listen to? For instance, what CD is in your car stereo right now? What CD is in the car stereo right now? Yes. You want the truth? <laughs> it, it's Joan Jett singing I Love Rock and Roll. Oh. You won't believe that. So uh, my, my daughter loves it. She has a CD of rock and roll tracks and she sings that when she's five. She sings that one out. That's fantastic. Also, I'm listening to Amy Winehouse a bit at the moment and um, something, a strange record called the uh, Mexican Institute of Sound. Oh, oh fantastic. Which is nice Latin, yeah. poppy. And no sex pistols then? Um, we do sometimes, but uh, not at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> These things are on rotation. Is that because he had, you know, that t-shirt? No. I hate being right. No, Actually, no, I, I listened to him because he had that t-shirt. <laughs> Clever that he one. said he didn't mean it. No, of course he didn't. Mean it. No, it's, a, it's a pussycat, maybe. It's a bit. Right, um, right, next one from Kimberly Carr of Ottawa, Ontario. Mm -hmm. right. Hi, David. My name is Kim Carr, and I'm a 13 year old and an inspiring musician. And my question for you is what do you believe comes first when you're inspired? The lyrics or the musical composition? Hmm, I would say that for me, 90% of the time, it is the music that comes first. Um, but hopefully, within that music, there is something that inspires a lyric. And sometimes it can be very obvious and, and it's bound up intrinsically with it. Um, for instance, the blue, which just, I didn't spot it, Polly spotted it in my life. Um, my lyricist and uh, she spotted it first and um, I just had to say well that is nailed it that is exactly what that one is about it's about the deep blue sea and various other aspects of that but uh, for me the music does actually come first great okay uh, next question is from Ayako Hasegawa of West Palm Beach Florida Hi David, on On an Island you play many different instruments, from the saxophone to the jumbush. In your opinion, and of course aside from the guitar, which instrument is the most fun to play and which one was the hardest to learn? Thank you. You're polite lady. Yes. <laughs> and she uh, could pronounce jumbush. Fantastic. Yeah, okay. Um, it's saying that it's hard, I don't know that any of it was so yeah. hard. It's fun to learn these instruments. Um, I'm still learning the guitar after more years than I care to remember. Um, you never quite finish. You never finish. You, you keep going. But, and they are all an enormous amount of fun. But I'd say which one is hardest. I'm a real amateur on everything else, I have to say. So I guess the guitar. And um, the chumbush looks pretty difficult to play. The Chumbush is an interesting thing. It's a 12-string Turkish fretless banjo. It's like a frying pan with, yeah. with rubber bands on it. Yeah. <laughs> it is. That's what we call it, the old frying pan. 
Uh, right, uh, next question is from Damien of Miami, Florida. How are you doing, David? The question I have for you is, um, I've heard you say in past interviews that coming up with lyrics has never been an easy process. What was your inspiration lyrically for the song, Pocket Full of Stones? Thanks. Um, well, as I mentioned briefly before, I am in a writing partnership with my lovely wife, Polly, and uh, she wrote the words to that song, and I, I've been in some good writing partnerships, really, in my time, a couple of people who aren't bad at it. Um, you'd have to ask Polly. Sorry, I know you were a long way away, and... Uh, but uh, Polly is out there. Can we... <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving swiftly on. Um, right, we don't have a VT for this one, but this is from Mike Petersell of Shelton, Connecticut. You've played a lot of Sid's materials in recent years. Has this been a conscious effort to keep his legacy alive, or is it just that you like playing the music? Um, it's a bit of both, I guess. Um, they're lovely songs, they're great to play, um, but um, I do feel a little bit of a sense of responsibility towards sort of keeping his legacy alive. I mean, I, he doesn't frankly need my help, I don't think, too much. Um, people love to hear his stuff, and uh, I mean, it's, it's pure joy to play something like Armand Lane with Bowie. It's just fantastic. And um, there was an occasion on the tour when we got to, um, uh, was it Clam, a place called Clam Castle in Austria, where, which was just a few days after Sid had died, and um, I did, rather off the cuff, sing a song of his called Dark Globe, which includes the lines, Won't you miss me? Won't you miss me at all? And um, I have to say, I do miss him a bit, so. All right, yes, no. Yes, Matt, uh, that was, uh, we didn't know you were going to sing that, you hadn't rehearsed it. <laughs> and uh, luckily you didn't ask us, because the, it's fiendishly difficult, but you did it incredibly well, and uh, it was a very moving moment, so uh, well done. Right, um, we have a BT here, and it's from Gabriel Childers of Winthrop, Washington. Hi, David. Could you choose four of your compositions that might best represent the evolution of David Gilmour, the man and the musician, over the last four decades, 1967 through 2007? Thank you. That's a big ask. <laughs> it is. Good luck. See you in a couple of hours. <laughs> well, first of all, we must quibble over the maths. 60s, 70s. 80s, 90s, 2000s. That was five decades. That was four decades. That's <laughs> not. Sorry, you don't want to own up to this stuff. Um, you know, it's a very tough one. That one. Fat old sons. One that I very much like. I still really enjoy playing from way back then, which would cover the 60s, I guess. The 70s would shine on you, Crazy Diamond which, you know, we all knew the moment that phrase dong, ding, dong, dong, popped out of my guitar yes. one day. We were onto something, and that's still a great moment whenever we play it. I don't play that. That riff, yeah, it's really good. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the 80s, I'd say Sorrow was a great track that we actually didn't really do on this tour. There were so many, some things had to fall by the wayside. Um, I love that one. That, that's one, strange enough, in relation to the other question. The words came first on that one. That was a, one of the rare ones where the words actually came out first. Um, let me think. In the 90s, High Hopes is a, what I, to me, bragging but not bragging, is a Pink Floyd classic, I would say. I shouldn't say that, but... <laughs> Why not? Sorry. What the hell? And, um... <laughs> on the recent album, On an Island, <coughs> the 2000s, The Blue is one of my 
favorite songs. It's just, um, and where we start, that's already six. Sorry. Okay. Anyway, anyway I could I go on, you, but maybe I'll, that'll do. <laughs> okay, uh, right, we don't have a VT for this one. It's from Tracy Hickman of Charlotte, North Carolina. The Lady of Charlotte. The Lady of Charlotte. Amazing, that's where she is. Um, David, which song was your favorite to perform during the On the Island, On the Island, it says here, On an Island tour? Um, Echoes was fun. I mean, <laughs> we tried that back in the, in the 80s, and, but before then we hadn't done it for years and years and years. But uh, somehow this time it just sort of took on a life of its own. And, uh, Throughout the tour, you could see, you know, people really changing and getting into it. Rick, I mean, he's having a fantastic time up there. It's very, very obvious. That was, yeah, I, that was that was the highlight. There's a, quite a few, but if I have to pick one, that's it. It's my favourite too. Right, the, and the last one from uh, North America. Here we have, without a VT, is from um, Amedeo Cristillo, or Cristillo, of Rochester, New York. But you're Spanish, you can see. Yeah, but it looks Italian to me. Oh, right. uh, in your entire musical career, what's the longest you've gone without picking up a guitar? Oh, mm, minutes, minutes, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I have um, at least once forgotten to take one on a, on a holiday. And uh, it's, you get terrible itchy fingers after a while and start knocking coconuts together or something, <laughs> anything to make a noise. Some frying pans, putting rubber bands on. Yeah. yeah. And calling on the chumbush. Venting the chumbush. Yeah. Inventing the chumbush. Right, now it's time to take some questions here in London, in Brixton. And uh, do you want to choose them, David? You can choose it. Okay, this straight away, this gentleman here. Right, how many guitars do you own? How many which is your own? most treasured possession? Um, Presume guitar. There's over a hundred guitars. Most of which are in storage, and which I don't really use that much. One of these days I'm going to get around to selling a few of them. But um, there's 20 or so in, in constant usage. Um, the Black Strat, obviously, is pretty well my favorite. And uh, an old Martin D18, 1945, I play at home all the time. Um, yeah, that, and yeah. The, the, that, that, there's a, a Black Gretsch duo jet, which just is beautiful as well. Lots of them are great. Okay, uh, this lady here, please, the second row. Sorry? Oh, you're on the microphone. Could you share with us your favorite moment that you ever spent with Sid? Favorite moment I spent with Sid? Um, uh, we went um, hitchhiking around France and staying in campsites one year. I think it was about 65, I would guess. My memory serves me well, not 100% reliable. And um, we stayed in campsites. We um, busked in Saint-Tropez. We sang Beatles songs from a Hard Day's Night, I think it was, and promptly got arrested because you needed a license for that. And slammed in a cell for a while. And then we, um, uh, then we were met by a friend with a Land Rover and we drove slowly up through France and we went to the Louvre Museum in Paris and we bought some books that weren't allowed in England from the old Olympia Press. And um, we sat in a campsite outside Paris in a tent with a torch reading them to each other and so on and so forth and then got terribly nervous as we smuggled them back into England. Um, we had some great times. That was long before Pink Floyd. Nice sign. Please pick me. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Hi Phil, hi David, Peter Tattersall from Brixton, so may I say a very warm welcome to Brixton. Thank you. Okay. Um, How was we met before? Yeah, about ten years ago. <laughs> um, I was fascinated to hear you talk about how you would like to dismantle your guitar and change the neck and change the pickups. And I know that, um, well, Pete Townsend liked to, uh, from The Who, liked to dismantle his guitar and they'd take the neck off by smashing it up and down on the stage. And he was successful, but I imagine you were more successful about putting your guitars back together again. So I'd really love to know um, how changing the neck and the pickup improve the feel and the sound of the guitar for you personally? Um, funnily enough, um, I did actually go around to Pete's house and um, he did have a massive box full of bits that he'd collected from broken fenders. He very generously gave me quite a few pickups and bits and pieces. Um, one is sort of questing, searching, for an improvement in sound and the feel of an instrument and um, probably half the time you don't really get anywhere and it doesn't change a bit but uh, it feels like you've done something and you've worked hard. I was quite handy with a soldering iron. Thank you David. Okay. Well, I hope you don't mind, I hope you don't mind that I wrote down the words to a song for you as a thank you from an excellent CD, a magical concert and well, the DVD does capture the, the magic for me personally. I hope it captures it for other people because it really is superb. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> That's great. Okay. More because questions? I really think that now no. you're on the road, you're in the pink, you're on the brink, you're through the void with brand new songs, not just Pink Floyd's. <laughs> okay, well, if you had high hopes about my song, you certainly won't have any more. So okay. let me just say that was a bit of fun. I'm with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Well, my gift is my song, and this one's for you, and this one's for Polly, and a great big thank you. Thanks ever so much, David. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay, the um, lady over there. Yep, yeah, with you. One lady. Hello, David. It's really, really great to see you here tonight. I want to know, I'm sorry if I'm very uh, cold, but I want to know what you are going to teach our children. We've, um, there's a lot of us here tonight who have followed you through our youth and we're about the same age, but we got kids the same age as, well, <laughs> 20, 25 year olds. What have you got for our kids? An appreciation <laughs> of music. That's Definitely all. Definitely got that. And work hard. And uh, <laughs> things will come your way. What else? <laughs> uh, my, my, we're a little greedy to me, aren't we? Okay, moving on swiftly. <laughs> okay, this gentleman up here. He's a white shirt. Hi, yeah. oh, um, every, every guitarist in the world, at whatever level, if they go around someone's house and spot a guitar, or if you're in the guitar shop, you always go straight to one chord or you bash out a song, I assume you don't go into a guitar store and start playing Stairway to Heaven, so what's your, uh, when you grab a guitar around someone's house or just spot one, which chord do you go to or what's the song you just bash out for fun? Oh gosh, well, we do like to sit around a campfire sometimes and sing old Beatles songs, and that's, they're, they're bloody good, you know. I watched Hard Day's Night on the telly the other night, and uh, there's some great songs that are, Terrific fun to just <laughs> sit and, and practice with. And, um, you know, imitation is a great way to start learning things. Okay, good. Uh, right, lady straight ahead there. Oh, good evening, David. Um, I'd like to know your thoughts on the Led Zeppelin reunion. Mm. Well, you know, I haven't, uh, haven't managed to get my tickets yet, but uh, <laughs> I will if I can. It's a one-off, as we understand it, and um, I'd very much like to go and see it. Um, I'm not sure about all these sort of nostalgia tours that uh, trundle off around the world, making vast pots of money all the time. I... 
No, I haven't. I'm going to pull strings and see if they work. <laughs> Well, by, by, a, by a strange coincidence, the promoter who did your Live at the Albert Hall um, concert is the, the promoter who's doing this after you might have some influence. Well, we will do our best. We'll, we'll do our best. Um, no, yeah, it's not here. No. Uh, no, sorry. Harvey, no, I don't think Harvey's here this evening, but um, this gentleman here? Where would you like to play that would be really obscure? Uh, the moon? <laughs> uh, well, the, the dark, otherwise then you wouldn't be able to see the lights. That's very interesting. Ah, okay, this gentleman over here. Thank, thanks, David, and thanks, Phil. Um, I'd just like to say thanks on behalf of the bloggers for letting us into your world over the last nearly two years. My question, is related to um, Phil in, in a way. Uh, Phil's buddy Brian Ferry recently released an album of covers. And I was just wondering if you were to release an album of covers, what would be your first three most put down tracks? Thank you. Um, covers are terrific fun to do, but um, they're usually torture for everyone else. Unfortunately, so um, I don't know. I'd, something like "Surfs Up" by the Beach Boys, I'd love to try. Um, but, no, you got me there. How about? Uh, we 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 did um, do um, "Crazy" by Niles Barkley, uh, sound check quite a lot. That was really good fun. So I thought that was great. What about any Crosby Gills and Nash? <laughs> <laughs> well, we could do ch teach your children oh. for, for that lady over there. <laughs> <laughs> good. Um, right. Oh, right. <laughs> Hi, David. Christine from California. Thank you very much for all of this. Just wondering if you're still playing saxophone and keeping that up. We'd love to hear it. Um, I'm a little rusty. I have to say, at the moment, I've, I have played it a few times, but um, not as often as I really ought to, to, to keep absolutely on the ball. But um, if I get to performing with it again, I will, will have practiced. Good. Well, thanks, um, everybody. We've got to uh, finish now. But uh, just a reminder that the evening isn't quite over yet. There's still a lot more to see on the documentary and a very special extra bit that you're going to see. And let's not forget that you can get the DVD on Tuesday in North America.